The love of God is immeasurable. It's unchanging. It's indescribable. Because God loves you so much, you can sleep through the night in peace. With Abide Bible Sleep Meditation, you can fall asleep fast with relaxing sleep stories based on Scripture. To start listening now, go to lifeaudio.com or search your favorite podcast app for Abide Bible Sleep Meditation. You can also download the Abide app for more biblical meditations at abide.com. What do millions of Americans and four U.S. presidents have in common? They all get a better night's sleep in Bowl and Branch sheets. Their best-selling signature sheets are made with the finest, most luxurious 100% organic cotton and get softer with every wash. Right now, get 15% off your first order at B-O-L-L-A-N-D-Branch.com with promo code LUXURIOUS with free shipping, free returns, and their 30-night worry-free guarantee. Exclusions apply. See site for details. Life Audio. Faith Over Fear is brought to you by Life Audio and is part of our Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational, faith affirming podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Hello, welcome to the Faith Over Fear podcast, where we discuss powerful truths to counter anxiety and fear, big and small. At Holy Love Ministries, we are passionate about helping God's children discover, embrace, and experience soul, deep, emotional, and spiritual freedom, and we want to inspire you to share that freedom with others. We would love to connect with you online. Just visit our show notes to learn about one of our upcoming events, how to book one of our speakers for your next event, or simply how to connect with us. What do you do when the world around you is falling apart? It's amazing to me how many people are breathing air. They're going about their business and doing the things you're supposed to do. But if you really ask them, they know that on the inside, they are spiritually and emotionally and relationally dead. If we're not careful, all of us can experience that death. When what we need to do, even as the world around us is falling apart, we need to learn how to march when it would be easier to stay where we are and die. Join me each week on the March or Die show as we discuss that and so much more. The Historical Jesus Podcast is the sweeping saga of the life and times of Galilean Jesus of Nazareth, as well as the faith, religion, and church founded to honor and disseminate his acts and teachings. Join me, Mark Vinette, on this fascinating journey through time, exploring the many great works of Christian theology, literature, architecture, music, and art inspired by the words and deeds of Jesus Christ. I'm Jennifer Slattery. And I'm Carol McCracken. And I suspect most, if not all of us, would agree evil wreaks havoc in our world and sometimes in our lives. According to reports from law enforcement, hate crimes in the United States have increased to record-breaking highs. Eight million children are reported as abused each year, and experts estimate an additional two-thirds who experience abuse go unreported. We've seen war ravage places like the Ukraine and Afghanistan, Yemen, and Syria and Iraq. All this and much of the chaos and pain many of us experience personally provide evidence for a truth claim made or alluded to throughout Scripture. Forces of evil do exist, and they're determined to steal and destroy everything good in our lives. Our spiritual enemy, the devil, wants us to believe that we're powerless against his attacks. That's a lie, literally born in hell, because if we've trusted in Christ for salvation, the Holy Spirit within us is so much greater than the evil's fiercest attacks. Holding tight to that truth, it really helped me persevere through an incredibly challenging, at times very frightening period during which my husband and I, we opened our home to a child who came from a a violent, a, a dark and a very evil family. So his dad was in prison. His mom was in prison for participating in a killing spree led by the kid's uncle who claimed his actions were driven by demons. His older brother was at the time that this youth was living with us, was on trial for conspiracy to commit murder. 
And we didn't know any of this prior to opening our home. And, and we also didn't know that he was connected with gangs. I don't know if he was actually in a gang himself, but a lot of his friends were. And he did drugs. And he claimed he wasn't in, in a gang. But still, you're just looking at all of these influences and this this history and we saw him, so he just seemed fascinated with gang colors and gang brands. And so I had no idea what he was doing whenever he left our home or even when he was in, in our home. And as you can probably imagine, this was really a, a stressful, a tense time when my anxiety increased significantly, especially so my husband during that time, he was doing a lot of traveling. Sometimes he was gone for like two weeks out of the month. And everything felt more intense when he was gone. And it, it didn't help that this kid, he hated women. So here mm. I am. I'm trying oh. to, to pay. And he, and he was 17. So I'm not a hugely strong, large woman. And so here is this basically kid in a man's body. And, and he was rebellious and he was angry and he was often unpredictable. And I would lie at night and here I am alone because my daughter was in college at the time i'm home alone and sometimes he's down in the basement where his bedroom was and he's probably angry at me for something because i'm trying to parent this kid who doesn't want to be parented right and i'm trying to do the best i can to because i know he needed to be parented or he would be out with his friends doing who knows what and so i would just get very i would get these I, these thoughts in my head recognizing that he was dipping his toes into evil situations all the time, right? And I'm thinking, what if you're bringing that into our home? What if gang members, you know, come and they they rob us or they, who knows? And I could get myself so worked up believing the lie that the evil that this child was engaged in was strong enough to overpower God's plans for me and my family and, and maybe even my sense of well-being. And I would remember, intentionally remind myself of a few things that God had brought us that assignment. So first of all, I knew I was operating in his will, which then because I knew that I could trust that he was in it. And then I remembered who my God was. We know if if we've been in church culture for much of a period of time, or even just like the statistics you, you reference, Carol, we know evil is strong, it's relentless, it's dangerous, it's horrific. Yes. But I knew from scripture and I knew from from who my savior is, I knew he was bigger and he was stronger and he was greater and that he was going to, he was going to stay with me. He would never leave me. And he was going to carry me through that he would surround me in his his loving presence and that nothing that's the kind of the cliche we might have heard. Nothing can get to us without first passing through God. Right. But it's just this idea that he is in full control all the time, fully present all the time, and that his power is greater than anything we can encounter. And that helped me, like I said, persevere. It didn't I'm not going to say that it made me have peace. Just right. this perfect peace. I still felt anxious. It was this battle. I, I'd i have moments of peace, but it was still an ongoing battle. But my anxiety decreased significantly as I reflected on who my God is and, and what he's promised throughout Scripture and what he's done already. Thank goodness you had that background because that would have been scary. But, you know, you raise, you raise a good point. God has given us parables and Jesus told a lot of parables. We've read some of those already where Jesus told some to illustrate the value of eternal life. And he also revealed that the godly are going to live among those that are evil, just like what you were describing. I mean, he did it with a parable of weeds. And I'm not comparing you to weeds, Jennifer. <laughs> but still, I think he did a point. And even in back in Mark 4, right before we got here, Scripture was telling us about a time when Jesus and his disciples, they were caught in that violent storm. And they were crossing, I think it was the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus simply, he rebuked the wind. And he told it to be quiet. And he used a word, in essence, it, it was telling the wind, hey, look, you are not wanted here. And he used that same word when he confronted the demons. So scripture does tell us that demons are real. 
and that we've got a spiritual enemy in the devil, like you were talking about. And he let both that supernatural and both of the natural, if you consider the wind, that wind, he let them know they weren't needed. They needed to leave. And they did because they could not stand against the son of God. Isn't that Amen. Cool? I love what you said. Not welcome here. I'm going to use that phrase, Carol. When I feel like evil is kind of invading my life, I'm saying you are not welcome here. <laughs> That's good. And hopefully it won't be welcome there. My goodness. You know, deep possession. That is often, uh, some people don't even like to talk about it. You know, it, it is what is demon possession. I don't want to get caught up in it and give it more credence than it's due. But John MacArthur wrote a description that helped me and he he described it as people that were indwelt so they they were like controlled and they were tormented by evil like fallen angels and it's because the demons indwell their victims that jesus he would cast them out and he liberated the afflicted person if you will but a thing to notice is that when scripture speaks about the power of those fallen angels i was talking about What it's doing, it is demonstrating the greater power of God. So it's never by itself, but it's always in reference to the greater power of God. One example that John gave was Ephesians 1, 2, because those that belong to God, they've got the Holy Spirit in them. And so we don't have to fear demon possession. We're the temple. We're the temple of the spirit of God. So I always like to bring that out to compare because it's easy to get scared about the power of evil forces because they're real. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure the disciples, they probably had similar fears that we do when they would see these demon possessed people. And that's why there's there's one story that I think is really powerful to show what you're talking about, Carol, the the reality of evil, but then the supremacy of Christ. And that's in Mark chapter five, verses one through 14. I'm going to go ahead and read it now. And so it tells us they, that's Jesus and his disciples, they went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain, for he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him night and day among the tombs and in the hills. He would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice. What do you want with me, Jesus, the son of the most high God in God's name? Don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. God invites us to cultivate thankful hearts by turning our eyes toward Him in good times and bad. To listen to more Abide Christian Meditations, just go to lifeaudio.com or search your favorite podcast app for Abide Christian Meditation. You can also download the Abide app for more biblical meditations at abide.com. Turbulent times call for clear-headed insight. That's hard to come by these days, especially on TV. That's where we come in. Salem News Channel has the greatest collection of conservative minds all in one place. People you know and trust, like Dennis Prager, Eric Metaxas, Charlie Kirk, and more. Unfiltered, unapologetic truth. Find what you're searching for at snc.tv and on Local Now Channel 525. Two thousand. Uh, that's just mind-boggling to me. Uh, the devil he wants to 
steal, to kill and to destroy. That always makes me think of that John 10, 10 thing. And, but while God acknowledges that Jesus is saying, you know, I've come that you can have a life and have it to the full. And I think in that stealing context, he was talking about the Pharisees that we've been discussing throughout the series and the Pharisees elsewhere in the Bible, they listen to the devil. So I think that we can apply this to the devil and to the demons, if you will. Look at what he's doing there. The devil and his demons, they want to isolate us. Didn't you say that? Yeah. The man's living. He was living on the, among the tombs, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And nobody, I think he said, I don't know if the passage I just read, I don't remember that I read it two seconds ago, but <laughs> which it, it's told in other gospels too. And in one of them talks about people couldn't even cross by. Yeah, that's it. In the recovery community, they recommend don't be alone. That's just what you don't want to do because you're subject to your own perceptions. And so the devil's very clever. And so you know he plays a lot of head games. And so Satan can distract us in our solitary state. And I just I, I just see the analogy there. The man's by the tombs, you know, that's that's an unclean thing in Jewish society. Right. So it's over there. And it also points to death, like what a visual of death to live in the tombs. That's it. Nobody to talk to. So he's very clever in that way. With mine too, it my fears were strongest when my husband was away. Well, look at that. That's true. So that just goes again to we are, well, and it, you, for those who live alone, you still need community, right? So maybe you have somebody you can text or you can say, hey, I'm dealing with this thought or with this fear, with this, this lie that keeps popping up that I know contradicts scripture. Will you pray with me? Will you give me truth? I think that can be really helpful. That's probably what you do in recovery communities too, as well, right? 100%. In fact, I've got somebody, I do live alone. And it's very easy to get caught up in your own head. You know, when you're your own counsel, that's not a good place to be because it's your perception. So I've got a friend all the time that I check with and I'm like, okay, you can tell me if I'm crazy, but and I always hope she says no, but <laughs> she's always very good with counsel to ground me. Nice. So yeah, it, it's a helpful tool to have. It really is. I also notice when we read this passage, we see another tactic that the devil, our spiritual enemy, uses, and he wants to steal our hope. Yes. And I, when I, when we read that passage, he, he said, we're, we're many, like there's many demons. So from a human perspective, like, well, we're beyond anything you can manage, then you can handle. We're not only the forces of darkness, but we are a quote unquote legion. And I don't know how many, if, if, if a demon went into each pig, that would be 2000. I don't know. If, I don't know what that looked like. That's 2000 demons. <laughs> this poor guy. So it would seem like from a, every, and just think of this guy's family. Yeah. We know he had a family at some point and, and to them, he probably seemed well beyond hope. His life was just going to end in darkness, in death, in self-destruction and isolation. And this a beautiful part of the story is that no human being is ever beyond hope. No situation, no matter how dark, is ever beyond hope. There's no lost cause with Jesus. That's Amen. You may feel like one, but you're not. You're just not. Jesus sees your heart. But I mean, if, if you cannot even be bound in chains and shackles, right, that speaks to a huge strength in these demons. Yes. And so why would you not in your natural mind be afraid of that? And how good to know that our God is even stronger than that. Amen. So we don't have to fear it, even when it looks lost, because I, I keep I, I just keep squiggling back to that hope you were talking about. You know, if you if you fall to the lie that you're a lost cause, you can be scooped up. It doesn't matter what your thought is. It doesn't matter what your fear is. God is stronger. Scripture says so. And Jennifer, I believe it because Amen. it says so. it's that simple. Right. Well, and Jesus proved it not only in this account and scripture is a historical. I mean, it's it's a it's a spiritual document. But it's also a historical document. Right. And and he proved it when from the grave, like he proved his power over death, over evil. Getting back to that, the chains and the iron shackles thing. Think about this for a minute. Jesus restrained them with nothing more than his presence. Amen. Amen. 
I mean, what a powerful visual, what a powerful thing that happened just to demonstrate God's power right there. Yeah. And by a mere word, it's important to recognize the forces of evil, whether it's like this big evil where in this story, it's it's really obvious or in the story I shared, it's really obvious or it's it's an insidious evil that maybe wreaks havoc in our relationships, you know, draws us towards sin or draws someone else towards sin or or addiction or whatever it is. We know it might seem enticing at the moment, right. but anything that's apart from God, it's strategically designed by our enemy to destroy us. So this man, he was cutting himself. He was hurting himself, isolating himself. We also see in the scripture passage that the pigs ran off a clip. The demons destroyed the pigs. And David Guzik from The Enduring Word, he suggests that Jesus allowed this to make it clear to show us just how destructive the devil and demons are. That's it. That's a huge amount. But at the same time, Jennifer, to me, it highlights Jesus's superior power. Amen. You know, he told the demons to get up and he told them to get out. He, all of them got out of that man. And they, rec- the demons recognized his authority and his power. There's a, what do you want with us, son of God? So here's why that's important for us. When our enemy is coming at us and planting mm-hmm. lies in our mind, he wants us to think he's more powerful, but we know and he knows he's already defeated. And so we need to turn it back around, right? Say, you have no business here. He, Our enemy knows that he's already conquered. That's a big deal what you just said. He already knows how the story's going to end. He's conquered. And we can rest in that truth too. Jesus is light. He's got power over the darkness. He triumphed over the cross, that resurrection power. And we spoke in the last episode about his conquering evil with good. We see that. We see that, that right here. Did you notice that Jesus always maintains full control? His power and his might are matchless. Like, notice again, the demons never attack Jesus, but Jesus verbally attacked them. And they obeyed his commands. Amen. So they hated him. Yes, he that's a good point. Hated him. And not once in scripture has he ever failed. We read sometimes about disciples not being able to cast out demons, but Jesus always got them out. Our world can feel really dark. And the statistics that you opened us with, those are difficult to process and to recognize and really to live in a world with that kind of darkness. But you spoke earlier about hope. Mm-hmm. And here, our ultimate hope, first of all, we do know that we're held secure by Christ, that we're surrounded by his love always. We also know one day he will banish all evil from our lives for good. One day he will make everything right. And in the passage we read, the demons knew this too, right? They said, have you come to torment us before the appointed time? So we know their defeat is already guaranteed. And our team member, Ava, so we were, we were, Carol and I were talking with her just about this passage and this, this episode. And she, she reminded us that the demons knew this as well. They knew, they said before our appointed time, they know their end is coming. <laughs> so yeah, that's so. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's not be the only ones in the spiritual world who don't recognize that. Let's recognize <laughs> that God is bigger. They're already defeated. Their time is is short and we have authority. We are we think that we're powerless against evil attacks, but the truth is the Holy Spirit is in us, the very power of God. Amen. And so much greater than anything, anything, any evil forces attack. Amen. So you can reflect on that. What a great reminder. Yeah, our God is so good. Amen. Would you mind closing us in prayer? Oh, sure. I'd be glad to. Dear Heavenly Father, you have given us a reminder today. You've given us a recognition that evil forces do exist, Lord, because you put us here. You put us here in this broken world. And the fact remains that it is a broken world. But you put us here for a reason. And you have us on a timetable. And you have us on a timetable that even evil forces understand. They know that one day they will not exist. 
One day we will have the most abundant life ever, not ever having to worry about evil forces, Lord. But for the time being, we've got the Holy Spirit power in us. And you remind us each and every day that you are there for us and that your power is so much stronger than anything that could ever come against us. Lord, remind us of that that each and every day. And Lord, grant us the tools that when we are tired, are hungry, or we are weak, that we have places to turn in a trusted friend. And if we don't have a trusted friend, Lord, help us get on the path to having one, Lord, so that we can do as you will and shine the light in the darkness of this world because, Lord, you have overcome. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I'm glad, actually, that you mentioned for those who maybe don't have that support system, we actually have a couple opportunities. So we have two online support groups, private support groups that I would invite you to join. And we'll put those in our show links. They're going to be online through Zoom that we would love for you to join where you can begin to develop some of those relationships and talk about these deep truths that will help us to fight our fears with faith. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already done so, I encourage you to subscribe. Then you won't miss a single episode. We've got some great ones coming up. Share it with your friends and make sure to rate it. That encourages our team and that helps others to find it as well. Until next time, may you live as one who truly has been set free. Faith Over Fear is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. I'm Billy Yancey, entrepreneur, fitness cowboy, father, retired Navy cornerback, and now podcast host. Listen to my new show, Billy and the Goat, on Life Audio. Happy listening.